Hello everyone. In this tutorial I want to show you how to use the curvature procedural wood texture. Before we start there are a couple of things worth of familiarizing with. For better understanding of the curvature texture I recommend to Google search for the keywords like, growth rings, early wood, late wood, sap wood, heartwood, pith, medallary rays or spalting. To improve the texturing workflow in Blender I recommend to get familiar with texture coordinates and vector mapping shading nodes. You can skip this part for now, but make sure you come back to it when you need it. To start with let's scale our default cube down from 2 meters to 10 centimeters which is going to be our sample object. Press N key on your keyboard and change dimensions to 10 cm on each axis and press comma key on your numpad to frame your cube on viewport. In fact this is still 2 meters cube, but it is just scaled down to 10 cm so this is not what we want. To make our cube actually have 10 cm we have to apply the scale of it. Hit Ctrl plus A and apply the scale. Now we can see the scale is 1 to 1 on each axis. So we already have our sample object and what we need to do now is assign a new material to it. Let's go to Materials Properties tab and as we can see we already have a material assigned. Let's change its name to Wood. Alright, so now let's rearrange our workspace a little bit and change our Timeline Editor to Shader Editor. Let's make sure we have our Wood material selected, hover our mouse over our viewport. Press Z key and select Material Preview to preview our material in real time. Once we have our Curvature Blend file downloaded from Blender Market let's append the nodes from there into our file. Go to File, Append, locate our Curvature file on our hard drive, open Node 3 folder and select Curvature, version 2.0 alpha while recording this video. In our shader editor press Shift plus A to add new node, group, Curvature. Next node we need to add is input, texture coordinate which we need to plug into the curvature's vector input from object output. Now let's plug the curvature's color output directly to our material output for now. And something started to happen. Ok, so we already have our base setup prepared and this is where the fun part begins. Let's go through all the sliders to see how they work. Rings Rings density Rings balance. It specifies the coverage of a light color of early wood and dark color of late wood. Noise. Noise intensity. In the most simple way we control the noise intensity by changing its color value and keeping it grayscale to have the noise uniform on each axis. If for any reason we need to control the noise on each axis separately, let's go to RGB channels controller and change red channel for red X axis green channel for green Y axis or blue channel for blue Z axis which is not changing at the moment, but it will in a while. Displacement. This slider controls a vector displacement which requires couple of things to keep in mind in order to make it work. The most important thing, it only works in cycles render. For that reason let's go to render properties tab and switch the engine from EV to cycles. In my case I want to use my GPU, and switch our viewport shading mode to rendered. Next step we have to go back to material properties tab. Our wood material is selected, scroll down to settings, surface and switch the displacement from bump only to any other than that. Once we've done that let's plug the curvature's vector displacement output to our material output's displacement input. If the displacement color is set to white it converts 100% of the noise to vector displacement. Let's subdivide our cube using subdivision surface to add some detail to our displacement. Now let's check the blue channel of the noise intensity which I mentioned before. In the same way as the noise intensity we can control the displacement, using separate channels, this time however, only the shape of our object changes and the texture remains the same. Noise detail, controls how rough our noise is. I always hold shift to change its value only slightly. Transformations. Let's go back to material preview mode in our viewport and switch off the visibility of the subdivision modifier. 
stretch Z core. Once we set the noise we can still add some stretching along Z axis, which is a core of our texture. I usually change the values of the noise and stretching interchangeably to find a wood grain pattern that I want. Offset X. Again, I hold shift and slide slowly to move my texture slightly along X axis. Offset Y. Same as above, but Y axis this time. Offset Z core. Similar to the two above, but this time it refers to the Z axis which is a core of our texture as I have just mentioned. Knots. While adding the knots to our wood grain I recommend to use the curvature's rings and knots outputs to inspect the results of our changes. White color of the knots output indicates single knots. Knots density. Let's increase the density to add the knots to our wood grain. Keep in mind the higher density means the smaller size of the knots. Knot size. The coverage of our knots. Value of 1 would cover almost whole surface. I usually do not go over the default value which is 0.2. Knots depth. The intensity of the knots. Knots noise. It determines how the noise impacts the shape of the knots. Knots height. Size of knots along the z-axis. Feel free to use knots output to mix with your color of the wood. Cells. Early wood cells density. The density and overall size of the early wood grain. Early wood cells length. Size of the cells along the z-axis. Late wood cells density and length. Same as above for the late wood grain this time. Cells noise. Here we control how the noise intensity affects the cells. Hardwood radius. Radius of the central darker part of the wood. We will change its darkness later on in the color settings. Pith radius. Radius of the pith which is a bit darker than the hardwood which again we will adjust its color in a while. I usually set this value to one ring size. Metal re-raise. Raise density. Density and overall size of the rays. Raise size. Coverage of our rays. Raise height. In addition to rays density we can set their height along the z-axis. Raise radiance. By increasing this value we set the rays to have natural look, however it's a bit harder to set them up. After increasing its value we usually have to compensate the other rays settings. Rays noise. Again the influence of the noise intensity for the rays this time. Spalting. Let's set the rays density to zero so we can focus on spalting settings now. Spalting density. Overall density of the spalting. Spalting height. Size of the spalting along the axis. Spalting roughness which is an extra details to our spalting. Spalting radiance. By increasing this value we can set our spalting to be radiating from inside of our wood. Spalting noise. Spalting rim. The intensity of the spalting bands. Spalting fill. An extra variety to the spalting. Color settings. Early wood base color. The color around our early wood cells. Early wood cells color. The color of the inner part of our early wood cells. Same applies to the late wood color settings. Heartwood, pith, and rays color. Roughness settings. In this section we can set the roughness of early wood, late wood and rays individually. Check out the roughness output to see the changes.
However the final roughness setup usually takes place once we have our environment and lighting in our scene. Bump settings. Those settings affects the normal output of our curvature node. Again it makes sense to set these values once we have our environment. Paneling. In this part we split our texture into panels. Paneling width, X, Y and Z. The value of 1 means 1 blender unit width of the panel. Let's keep low values so our panels are not wider than our whole object. Sometimes we can see some artifacts at the sides of our object. It is because the panels change exactly on the object's face. To get rid of that problem we can change the value slightly by multiplying it by 1.0001 for example. Paneling offset. Here we add some variety to our panels by offsetting them along the axis. Paneling center. Here we offset our panels across so we have one in the center of our object. Vector input. This is where we plug our texture coordinate node. I always use object based coordinates and usually I plug vector mapping node in between to have extra control over the placement of our texture. Outputs. Let's see how to connect the curvature node to our shader. In a basic setup we use color, roughness, and normal outputs. We can of course mix the other outputs with the basic ones if we want. We can even go crazy with it. The basics of the vector displacement were covered earlier. Here is an example of how to use an intensity map to displacement. We can plug whatever we want, bitmap, procedural map, or vector color. Last thing we haven't discussed yet is a vector output. We can plug that vector into another texture if we want to combine it with the curvature. So this is it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and now you are an expert in creating your favorite wooden patterns. If you still have any questions or maybe some suggestions of how to improve the curvature, just leave me a message on Blender Market. Thanks for your time.